Hi guys, this is a redirect to my reaction to The Legend of Korra, Season 3, Episodes 4, 5 and 6. I absolutely love these episodes. These episodes were amazing. We got to see more character development for Lin and we got to see the Metal Clan. The Metal Clan, the the Metal City just looks absolutely beautiful. It's futuristic, just awesome and um, yeah. Um, so firstly, um, before I get on to like... Um, talking about Lin's backstory and the Metal Clan. Um, so in the first episode, Korra and the crew they were they were on a mission to rescue the prisoners, the Airbenders. They were they were on a mission to rescue the Airbenders that are being kept by the Earth Queen and the Tai Li. Um, so that was their mission. Um, so they were they planned this out strategically. Um, so they use Jinora's astral proje projection ability to figure out where exactly Kai and the rest of the airbenders were and gladly Jinora was able to use her ability usefully to find out where exactly Kai was um, and the rest of the airbenders and um, the airbenders were getting trained by the Tylee um, the airbending was getting trained because the earth queen was to use the airbenders um, to create an army of soldiers out of them and the thing that I'm a little bit still confused about is the fact that you can just create an army of like any benders like why specifically airbenders is it because they're more rare but like you can still it doesn't matter it's not like airbending is like the most powerful bending like that's debatable in my opinion waterbending seems like the most powerful one because considering that they can do blood bending some of them but like like i don't really see like why air bending is now being given like the special treatment but i mean like is it because of the harmonic conversions or i don't know um anyway um so they managed to rescue genora it all thanks to Genoa, they all managed to rescue um, all the airbenders and I thought it was a bit too easy how they were able to <clears throat> sneak past the um, the guards and were able to take them but like I mean like they were actually busted by the Earth Queen and the soldiers eventually um, but thankfully they were able to defeat them and actually fly away um, and it's also thanks to Lin and Asami providing the airship so that they can all be rescued safely. Um, so yeah, that was a job well done. And some of the airbenders are now part of the Northern Air Temple. Um, and just seeing Tenzin cry because it it's been his dream to like recruit airbenders and get to know other airbenders. And it was Aang's... Um, yeah, it is something that Aang would have wanted to like socialize with other airbenders because in his lifetime he was the only airbender around so you know it's it's happy it's, it's a happy feeling for Tenzin like because he knows that his dad would have like wanted this himself but he didn't get that chance but Tenzin is getting this chance um and I'm sure his dad would have been proud um so yeah um some are now becoming air nomads um, in the Northern Air Temple. Um, meanwhile, um, Korra and the crew, they went to the Metal Clan um, because some airbenders are in the Metal Clan, um, notably Lin's niece, Opal, being an airbender. Um, and, sh and when they were like traveling to the Metal Clan, Lin was being very grumpy. She was like, she was telling them that she really did not want to be um, visiting that city. And I knew straight away that this must be her hometown, like where she grew up. And she didn't have a bad, she didn't have a good like childhood. Um, Cause she was just acting so like resentful, like, like as if she had like a really bad time there and that's why she doesn't want to go there um but then we found out that the matriarch of the metal clan is in fact um is in fact um lynn's younger half sister so that means toff got married twice or she just 
got laid by two men. Um, I'm pretty sure she got married. I do know she got married, but I didn't know she had two, like, two men in her life. <laughs> okay, um, alright, um, okay. Um, so anyway, um, so, cause considering that she's a policewoman, she's, she just seemed like she was very work oriented, but anyway, um, I'm not judging. Um, so, um, they don't have a good relationship, Lynn and her younger half sister, they don't have a good relationship at all, and that's why she's so resentful about returning to the Metal Clan city. Um, did they say the name of the city? I don't, I don't remember. I, I think I missed that. Um, but like Cora, she met Opal. Opal seems like a very nice girl, a very kind, loving, caring, nice girl, very much brought up respectfully. Um, and yeah, and but then like when Lynn was like being so mean and resentful, like I can understand to some extent towards your own sister, but to be resentful towards your own niece, like I thought it was absolutely disgusting the way she was being very mean towards Opal and Opal was like, she just wanted to get to know her aunt and you're just like being very mean towards her and you made her cry as well. Like it's good that she apologized afterwards but like it was just it was really frustrating seeing Lynn so grumpy throughout these episodes and it's just so like she's been bottling up all this anger inside her because of what happened in the past um which is understandable like um she basically basically her younger half sister got involved in some sort of crime regarding a robbery so she br basically broke the law and because Lynn it was a police even back in the days she was following in her mom's footsteps um so she it was it was her job to arrest um her own sister because even though she's her own sister she still broke the law um but Toph she actually told both of them off um and it was actually the younger half sister who um who created um Lynn's scar um so we've, we've got to see some proper backstory about Lynn and her past and Toph's past as well um so I thought that was really interesting it's quite sad though like they didn't have their parents around much they never got to know their fathers either so did Toph get divorced or separated and she got custody of the children like how do you not know your own dad? And like, to be honest, like when it comes to Toph, like I never thought of her as someone who would want to get romantically involved. But just because, like in the Avatar series, she didn't have any romantic interests. Um, but then again, she was a kid, <clears throat> and you know, she was a kid, so I don't expect her, everyone to have a romantic interest. But like, it just. Like, it kind of blows me away that she had, like, two men in her life that she was dealing with. Um, anyway, um, so, um, so yeah, that, that caused a lot of conflict. Lynn resents the fact that she, she basically blames the younger half-sister, I forgot what her name was, I apologise. Um, she bla basically blames the younger half-sister for making tough protect her and cover up the whole arrest because obviously Toph did not want to arrest her own daughter um, and because she's a chief she can just get rid of the arrest report um, but because she had to cover it up she had to she felt so guilty about covering up her daughter's crime that she resigned as a police officer as a chief um, so <clears throat> Lynn basically um, blames the young half-sister for doing that to Toph to make her feel guilty about it and to make her resign for it. Um, okay, um, that was it's quite fucked up. Um, yeah, it just so they were saying like how Toph gave them so much freedom to do whatever they want and I think that's good, that's nice to know. But at the same time, it seems that Toph just didn't discipline 
them both, especially the younger half sister who was just like rebelling a lot. I mean, to be fair, a lot of teens rebel at that age and get into a lot of misch mischief at that age. But it seems like the younger half sister has actually changed a lot over the years. And Lynn was just like, she didn't believe in the fact that her own sister would change. Um, then they started actually physically fighting and I just thought that, that was just crossing the line now. You don't physically fight your own sibling. Um, regardless of what's going on, it was just... I mean, I understand that she really wanted to let out her anger. Um, I guess that's a way to release all of that. But it's all in the past now, you know? So, try to make up. Um, and like Opal, like she had to stop the physical fight. Um, and what was amazing was the fact that the acupuncture that Lynn was getting, because she was feeling so stressed out about everything that's going on, the fact that the four prisoners have been released, and that's another thing, the four p prisoners have now been released. Zuko was trying to stop um, the fourth one from getting released by Zaheer and the other two, um, but unfortunately he couldn't stop them because he was just outnumbered, um, they were just way too powerful. Um, so the fourth one was released and they now are on the hunt for the avatar and oh my god the way Zaheer just he shaved his head so I didn't recognize him I wasn't I didn't I, I definitely thought there was something suspicious about this particular airbender recruit because he was he wanted to um, become an airbender nomad um because obviously um, Tenzin and them, they were like recruiting more airbenders. Um, so he was a recruit. But like, it, it's a, and he was just, no, he, the way he was being really skilled, that got me thinking. But like, I just, I couldn't clock on that it was Zaheer until he started saying that poem with the necklace to Jinora. Then I was like, wait, did you just shave your head? And I was like, oh my God. And then when Kia started attacking him I was like oh my days man this sneaky bastard managed to get through just so that he can get information as to where Cora is um wow that, that is that is clever and sneaky that is cunning that is a cunning technique um wow uh, if Cora had been there then she would have been done for she would have been taken away or killed I don't know they still haven't said I don't think they said, they have said what they actually wanted her for. Um, so basically, Tenzin told Cora that a long time ago, um, Zaheer and the, um, Zaheer and the other, t other three, they actually wanted to kidnap Cora when she was like a little infant, a little kid. Um, but Tenzin and them, Tenzin and Zuka and them, they actually managed to stop them and imprison them. Um, but they never actually found out why they wanted Korra back then and she was not even the avatar back then so I guess they because it seems that Zaheer has some sort of power that allows maybe actually I don't know but it seemed like right at the end he figured out that Korra was in the med clan so does he have like some sort of psychic ability for him to find out things that happen in the future You'd think it would be the woman with the third eye to be able to do that, considering it's a third eye, um, which is all to do with psychic ability. But um, um, I don't know, like, I could be totally wrong, but it seems like with the air element, they can like do some spiritual powers, like with Janora, maybe even Zaheer. That this is just total guess, but it just seems like he might have some psychic ability. And he was able to foretell that Korra will be the next avatar, which is why they tried to kidnap her all those years ago. Could be completely wrong with this, but like, that's just what I think. Because like, why else would you want to kidnap Korra unless you knew that she would be the next avatar? Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, so, so back to the med clan so Lynn she actually got help with the acupuncture and he actually managed to allow her to 
get all of that anger and resentment out and all that stress out and she just became more peaceful the next day um i guess it was also to do with the physical fight because once you let all that anger out you become more peaceful and she actually apologized to opal and she actually shook hands with um with her sister so she actually made up with her sister at the end so i thought that was brilliant that was really good um but now Zaheer knows where Cora is, so Cora really needs to go now. She really needs to leave the Met Clan um, and head someplace else because um, you don't want to be caught by the four prisoners. Um, damn, I said a lot. <laughs> but these were just brilliant episodes, um, and I'm I really like this season already. I think it's like it's it's like already like the best season so far like that's how good these these past six episodes were but we'll see how it goes throughout season three um but yeah um so what you think of these episodes let me know and stay tuned for more